Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time of day you've taken to join us here. And however you've chosen to join us, we thank you. On behalf of everybody here from the Batcave, I'm your host, Adam Gerard, Red Thunder. And joining me as always into this quest of all things DC on TV, large screens, small screens, comic books, and pretty much anywhere else you can find content. Ah, the Honey Badger Terry O'Neill. Hola! And the Dad Knight Brayden Hearn. Hello. <laughs> And how are we this week, gents? Pretty good. Exhaustified would be the word. Is that a word? It is now, man. They, they come from the the source. You know, the, the source. <laughs> Look okay, at the source. I was reading the source earlier today, and I <laughs> can tell you that that is not in the source or <laughs> diction airy. <laughs> diction Aries. Yeah, diction airy does not have that one. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, it's the only way I. Because I feel satisfied and exhausted at the same time, so exhaustified. Because you know, I think as a as a trio, as as the flying trinity, the flying trinity. There you go. Um, mm. We've put a lot of effort in, effort into this week, so it's actually been a really good week for production. Yeah. So I yes. bumped up a level. Our producer finally like he put some money back into the editing budget. I, I know, right? Thank God. <laughs> He's been spending <laughs> weight. He's been buying top shelf booze for far too long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> down to the penny pincher. <laughs> one filter vodka for him. None of the six stage filtering process anymore. I think he's actually set up his own still at this point. <laughs> that in would the expi- basement. That would explain the smell and the slight the explosions. Rise. Yeah, the, the I've rise. Been bangs. I assume that. I thought it's a hell of a meth lab that he's got going down there, and the cops are turning up soon. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's all right. We've got some V8s out the back. But we'll look, do some uh, probation running later. On. He, look, he's the reason that the, I let him live underneath the house. Like I carved out a bunker. I keep it padlocked for his protection <laughs> from so, the outside. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm protecting him from everybody else because he's yeah. he likes to sit down there six days. It's his cryogenic. If you will, he sits down there six days a week drinking Comes up on a Tuesday. bootleg, yeah, <laughs> bootleg bloody uh, vodka made out of his bathtub steel. And then I wake him up and I'm like, "Time to edit a show, you bastard!" <laughs> wake the gimp. Exactly. <laughs> Comes, he's all like, "Oh, you've done a good job with this one, kid." <laughs> Still haven't got that killer instinct, though. Still haven't got that killer editing software, though. <laughs> oh, for the love of God. You see, if we had a decent budget, we could probably buy decent editing for software. <laughs> if we had a decent like budget, we could just hire a producer who knows what he's doing. Yeah, this is true. So he didn't drop out of like editing school in the first three three weeks. <laughs> like, he did a one, the one module that he thought he could excel at and just failed miserably, so he quit. <laughs> like, he, he, he learnt the module for how to press cut on Final Cut so you can just like razor blade cut a thing, and he's yeah. just like... Yeah, you know, <laughs> and then I just do the paste. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's <laughs> yeah. all about that. He's all about that paste, paste, paste. He's all about the paste. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, I guess that gets the stupidity out of the way. Let's no, look at this week. No, no. Uh, we'll be... continue with then. This week on TV, <laughs> where uh, stupidity will reign free. Huzzah! My name is Oliver Queen. <laughs> After five years in hell, I have come home with only one goal. To save my city. To the rest of Starling City, I'm someone else. I am something else. My name is Barry Allen, and I am the fastest man alive. A friend recently gave me the idea for a new name, and something tells me it's gonna catch on. James Gordon, Alfred Pennyworth. We're gonna get the guy that did this, sir. New boy, are ya? Sorry. Good luck, mate. Okay. Now, obviously, as always, I once again don't control the schedule, so <laughs> uh, if I did, I'd change the day. But uh, we start off with uh, this week's Gotham, which was entitled Red Hood. And uh, first of all, I just want to get Smick out of the way. No, Jerome. Already a great episode. Yeah, fantastic. Yay. <laughs> now, uh, like I said, I'm going to try my new system of reviewing where I just give a quick few bullet points, yep. then we'll have a nice discussion. This episode dealt with uh, Jim and Harvey tracking down a team of, uh, I guess you'd call them burglars, robbers, bank robbers? Yeah. Heist bandits. extraordinaires. Bandits. Bandits, that's a good name. Yeah. A group of bandits who um, all like to wear masks. One of them decided that he was going to spice it up a bit and wear a red hood. And uh, when they were fleeing the bank, the security guard fired off some pot shots. He's not very good without his glasses and missed the guy in the red hood. And that led to the myth that, the myth, I should say, that 
the Red Hood is all powerful. Mm. And so one by one, these knuckleheads start killing each other off to get the Red Hood. Mm. Now, while all of that is going on, Penguin's club has run out of booze and he's very upset about that and he can't get any booze because Don Maroney controls all the booze and don't like the Penguin. And so Butch, who's sitting at the end of the bar, all like, man, you ain't seen what Zaz made me see. He's like, yeah, well, he's a dick, so he's not going to let you have the, the booze. And then doesn't say anything else, and Penguin goes off and tries to steal the booze, but Butch comes in with a whole bunch of cops and does it for yeah. him. He's like, does he do it sensibly, man? Be smart. Because I'm Butch. <laughs> um, and, then, and then in the boat prison, prison boat? I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's a floating boat. cell. It's not no, a boat. It's, no, it's That's not, not a boat. boat. It's a mansion. It's a, okay. It is an actual mansion. It's it like they got. Yeah. Anyway, we'll discuss that. Whatever. Later. Whatever. The the imprisonment of Fish Mooney continued. Yes. And uh, this week she was taken to meet the the facilitator of the place that she's in. Mm-hmm. And when she said she wanted to see the boss, he was like, "Well, nobody sees the boss." And then she was like, well, "What's this boss's name?" And we were told he's Doctor Dumasha. Mm-hmm. Sounds very similar to Dole. Maker. I wonder if that will come into play hmm. later. I don't know. It also um, sounds familiar to Shoemaker, but anyway. There's not enough neon for <laughs> that. Yeah. So uh, Fish basically brings up the fact they're not going to be human organ transplant donors anymore. Oh. And uh, when she's told that she has lovely eyes, which would make her a brilliant prize, she gouges one out and crushes it to prove her point that she will not be controlled. So Fish went a little bit crazy this week. <sighs> and finally, back in Gotham... The Red Hood gang is taken down by Jim, Harvey, and every cop, it seemed, in the precinct. And when one of them goes to fire a shot at the end, literally every cop shoots, which is something you'll often see in real police shootouts. Yep. (sighs) Anyway, uh, the Red Hood gang are completely wiped out, and unbeknownst to any of the cops, because they're all so good in Gotham, (laughs) the Red Hood is just left lying around. He's picked up by a little kid who puts it on and proceeds to mime shooting Mm. a cop. And that's where we go to black. So that was this week's episode, Red Hood. Gentlemen, what do you think? Oh, no, I sorry. I missed a part. You I missed a very, very major big, part. What am I talking part. about? Amateur. Jeez. Oh, Boo. <laughs> also, Bruce and Alfred took in an old war friend of Alfred's named Reggie, who I'd never heard of in the comics. And I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting. I wonder if he'll build up as a big character or any of that. He only proceeds to, uh, first of all, teach Bruce how to fight by getting him to absolutely pummel getting Bruce to pummel the crap out of Reggie. Yep. As Reggie's like, come on, son, you can hit me hard on that. Hit like a man, you little woman. And then proceeds to set about what appears to be robbing Wayne Manor. And when Alfred confronts him, Reggie stabs him straight through the heart and leaves him to bleed out to death. And Bruce rushes in, calls 911 to help his friend, mm-hmm. which I noticed, which was a very yep. nice touch. And this kid, once again, sees somebody that he loves bleeding to death in mm. front of his arms, and the final moments are that we are told in the boardroom of Wayne Enterprises that uh, Reggie is working for Wayne to get information on Bruce and Alfred mm-hmm. uh, and advises the Wayne Enterprises board that they don't need to do what they're planning on doing to Bruce, mm-hmm. which is very clearly, we're going to kill that little bitch. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we don't need your services anymore, Reggie. Go back to the bottom of the bottle. Yep. And that's where we ended. So, mm. very good Gotham this week, and uh, like I say, I, the fact that Thank Bruce God. called Alfred friend, mm. that for me was the absolute best part. It wasn't my butler needs help, or anything. it's my friend. Mm. My best friend is dying, not again. Mm. Anyway, mm. gents, your thoughts? It's It was good to see them return to the standard they set themselves um, in the opening six weeks. Yep. They, <clears throat> they no longer seem lost so much, either that was part of the plan, giving us that, oh no, where are we going? And then bam, solid episode. Uh, but for me, it was just one of those very well bookended episodes. It still had a little bit of a cliffhanger. We know Alfred's fine. is going to be fine, I should say. Um, I like the introduction of Alfred's past. We'll, we'll know that his past has always been alluded to in the, in the comic book series, a little bit in the animated, being mm-hmm. XSAS and all, or whatnot. I like the fact they get, they're they actually making this Alfred uh, a little bit dirty, almost. like mm. gritty. It, yeah, textured, layered like a parfait or an onion. They pretty like, much said he was a, a stone-cold killer. Yeah, didn't yeah. They? yeah, which I could completely imagine because if that face came at me in the middle of the night with a gun, mm. I'm done, I'm good. But it I, also I makes happening. sense as well. It sort of goes, well, maybe that's why Batman is so anti-killing. Yeah, very much. what Alfred taught him. Yeah. You know, he goes, I've done it, and it 
Yeah. This is with you, don't do it. And it also yeah. makes sense that that as well, Brain. That's a great point because Alfred, when he's talking to Reggie about Bruce, says like, because Reggie says something like, "Oh, you know, it must be great saving this kid." And Alfred's like, "Yeah, I understand, mate. This kid saved me." Yeah, yeah. And it is that moment of like, yeah, I can see what it is. Alfred finally gets to redeem him. He's clearly taking lives that weigh so heavily on him. Yeah, absolutely. And now he gets to give that back by yeah. giving somebody a life. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, it's that double side co- sign coin where everyone you ever meet always shows you that one side they want, but they've always got that other side. Yeah. Either yeah. they can snap or they've got a very dark past. They want to talk about it. You know, I've, Everyone's got a skeleton. Yeah, everyone has a skeleton. I'm, I have a cousin who served in the military. He told me some ser- very scary stories. He, hmm. he served in the Sa- in Sapo. Stories there as well. But at the end of the day, the face that he always puts on is the one he chooses to show yep. is yep. the one of a loving father and a business owner. So that's just it. So it just shows everyone has that dark side. And mm. it's always it's the duality building. of man. Yeah, it's always that character building thing. Well, there's a there's a line by Nitschke, or I say a line, a phrase, paragraph, whatever you call mm. it. Uh, it's in a book that I was reading this week by by a profiler named Robert Ressler, and it was something that he used particularly to try to drum into police officers and FBI recruits that things will affect you. And the quote is simply, "Be careful, he who fights monsters, for those who look into the abyss." may find that the abyss will look into them. Mm. And that's what this is. It's also the way Penguin summed it up very well this week, which is you're not defined by your friends, you're defined by your enemies. That yeah. is the perfect... That that should be the tagline for fucking every Batman comic ever. That also reminded me of uh, a quote Batman said. There is the one thing that is different between you and I is you, we both looked in the, into the abyss and you're the one who blinked. Yep. So that's... It's obviously a common thread throughout Batman, if not DC. Yeah. So no, I I, I, I like this episode, but there is one thing that really did annoy me, and that is that once again they're relying on the tension of, well, well if we put Alfred in danger, people will be worried. No, we won't, mate. We no. know we <laughs> yeah. know what happens with Batman, and we Unless, know the butlers there yeah. are like, oh, very good. So why don't we get ourselves killed tonight? Yeah, basically. Yeah, and he's the only one with his uh, valid driver's license anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. You're exactly right. I will say, though, there's something that feels weird about this show, and to me it feels like Bruce is being rushed through into becoming Batman mm-hmm. to the point where he should be almost ready to put on the the, the mindset and the speed he's going at the moment. Yeah. Two years from now, he should be putting on a cow, which mm. doesn't make sense. Yeah, everything else in Gotham is like, drag your feet, son. Except Penguin, up until right now. Yeah. yeah. I think they've realised, all right, we've gone as far as we can with Penguin without making him full-blown Penguin. Yeah. And they're yeah, going to stop problem. with him and start focusing on something else. But then how do you, but, but what do you do so for the next three years? You only have one scene with the Penguin in his club well, each. I, I don't know. Slowly getting fatter and fatter each problem, episode. Yeah. It's um, just not smart. There's part of me that sort of likes the development of Bruce. I, I and him yeah, and I'm I, enjoying it, don't get me wrong, but at no, what point are you going to go it's No, I knew kids at school who had that very detective orientated mind. They have had an inquisitive mind. How you going? Yeah. Well, I didn't know you at school. I was cursed with your friendship six months ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, blessed. Blessed. Sorry, we'll just, that'll be $5 out of the editing budget. We'll just edit that in. <laughs> uh, you'll be pissed. That's like a whole bottle of bathtub hooch right there. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we, we all know that one kid who wants to know who's blessed or cursed with curiosity. Yeah. So, I mean, you can write it one of two ways. One that they, you sit there panicking, going, "Wow, we're getting Batman too quick, we're getting Batman too quick," which is fine. But at the same time, I, I have a feeling if you're feeling that way watching this show, you're gonna miss all that other lovely underlying tension. Like um, I think it was this episode where Barbara was trying to pretty up the girls. Yes, mm-hmm. and uh, she said to Selena, "Your beauty can be a weapon." And Selena promptly, like very quickly, turned around and said, um, "Yeah, well, look what that's done for you." Yeah. yeah. Now, for that, for me, went, haha, that's going to st- come back and bite you in the ass because you end up as a hooker. Second of all, it was that. I don't think this one will be the hooker. This one will be the thief. Eh, two of one, really. Um, but I like that because it brought the character Barbara back into the foreground a little bit as well. Yep. So I am still in. Tr- I don't like the character Barbara that we've seen, but I'm slowly seeing an effort of. Re- Redemption story being woven in by like taking care of the girls. They're slowly 
they're, that's what they're not going... They're she's not... clearly a piss head, though. They oh, made that pretty clear this week, like, <laughs> nine in the morning when she's slugging back. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what Selena doesn't like about Barbara yeah. more than anything. It's yeah. the fact that she's a drunk. But that's the thing. I mean, that's how you sort of start your redemption. Mm. There's always that one... Do you hear that? The soft yeah, sounds sorry. of Harrison Wells running off in the background. <laughs> um, He's got three weeks off. He thought he'd come for a holiday. <laughs> in, in Victoria, of all places. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I'm so I'll never f- look for him there. Yeah. Ha ha ha! He's gone uh, for a sleep till Tuesday, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to check the rest of the crew. Anyway, <laughs> but that's how you sort of start a nice, almost slow burn redemption. Yeah. You, you start that, and so we're going to get that soon. Well, that'll be the other, all like five minutes of the episode. And then. Yeah, you know, with Bruce, I I like it because he's got that inquisitive mind. He wants to know answers. Mm. Mm. He wants to hold people accountable. I knew kids like that at school. They were like the school captains, and you know, not the jocks that did it so they could get the pussy, but you know, they did it because they wanted that sense of they did it for res- justice. Yeah, justice. They want responsibility. They don't shy away from it. They don't. You know, some people have you know greatness thrust upon them. I others, was just about to make that comment. Leaders are born when greatness is thrust upon you. Yeah, and you others receive it as a wrong. birthday present from their parents. Yeah, George Bush. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that's he's one of those people that, and I can actually grow to like Batman more with this kid's performance. Oh, yeah. I'm not arguing that. My, I guess my my worry is that he's 11 now. Yeah. All right. Like we said, you don't theor- he doesn't theoretically leave for his world odyssey until he's at least 17, 18. Mm-hmm. Right. He's already at the point where he's about to take over Wayne Enterprises. He's learning how to fight. All the, you, um, what my point is just this show, in theory, if the writers are good, should be looking for at least five to seven seasons. Yeah, absolutely. And at this rate, they're going to burn out of Bruce mm. by season two. It's going to be like, well, yeah. off you go to Nanda Parbat. Well, this is the question. Who? Obviously, he's 11. Legally, he can't control a company. Legally, you cannot. Mm. So he would have to have someone in his stead. Alfred. Lucius. I, well, that's yeah, the Lucius. question. Is Lucius from the old comics? Was, was yep. he a newish? He nope. is. Nope. Lucius. Ha, Lucius was the uh, in a very similar thing to what happened in the film. But basically, Lucius has always worked at Wayne, mm. and he was somebody that Thomas Wayne trusted. Yeah. And then the board is corrupt. Bruce yep. comes in, cleans out the board. Mm-hmm. At like I think he's about. 13, 14 at the time. So it's yeah. a couple of years ahead of where we are now. Mm-hmm. But he comes in, clears out the board and establishes Lucius as mm-hmm. the head. That's what the, the Dark Knight, didn't you get the memo yeah. thing was mm-hmm. all from. Yeah. Okay, so obviously that's where we're leading to. Yeah. Leading, leading to, if it's running like a year and a, maybe a year in front of the comics, like time-wise, like yep. instead of being 13, he's 12, that still sits okay with me because a 12-year-old who... who Technically, is the owner. Oh, I'm not agree that, but it's just that. it's going to be very weird if it's just suddenly like ben I want to look into this, and then oh, one week, hi, I'm Lucius Fox. Oh, mm-hmm. you just appeared out of nowhere. Well, that's <laughs> they'll, they'll do that. They'll probably do that like they did with Harvey Dent. Introduce, <laughs> pardon me. Um, introducing <laughs> one episode, and then he'll sort of fade into the background, but yep. not a deep background. He'll like you'll see him at a board meeting mm. or things like that. That's what they may do. Hopefully, so, because if, uh, otherwise it's going to be seem, Alfred who's... The writers don't seem that stupid. Like, the way they did the Red Hood, I like that, because the kid who originally yeah, put on good. the Red Hood, I'm like, eh, it's not a bad The kid who of... put on the Red Hood, they, they made to look so much like he could become the Joker. It That's the thing. Like, haircut and everything. I saw him like... I could believe that. Yeah, and I was thinking, like, this dude's got the charisma. I'm not yeah, mad. It's, that's it. I mean, I wasn't hating it. I was hating it a little bit when he got shot, but... And I'm tremendous. I kind of wonder if the implication is now meant to be that kid who picked up the hood at the end. I, I, I like this because yeah. it cleaned up last week's shit of, don't... Mm-hmm. If that is the Joker, don't make it so mm-hmm. obvious. Yeah. After this week's episode, I think that was... Oh, yeah. Harrison Wells well. has got mad. Well. <laughs> oh, he got pissed off. We're not, we're not talking about Flash enough. Yeah. He's just... He's got that wheelchair building. tuned with the turbo. He hit the little... <laughs> Wait, Speed Force. No, it's because yeah, Speed Force. Force. <laughs> Sorry, Brad, what were you saying? I stopped for speeders. Uh, uh, what was I saying? Honk if you don't... Uh, yeah, I think it, after this week's episode, it really sort of... Well, it made me feel that last week's Joker episode was, was actually a red herring because they just... It was a joke. Know, they chuck that in there going, you know, could be the Joker. Then they go, this Red Hood, red hood guy, first one, could be Joker. Second one, obviously, was too fat, but anyways... Next yeah. one could be Joker shot, and then they just sort of every time they kept maybe coming up with a possibility. Yeah, it was shut yeah. down really. And they're always decent, except for the one with the stutter. He was going to lose his girlfriend. That yeah. was really cool though. They put the mask on the stutter, the stutter stopped. Went. Yeah, I was like, yeah. that's nice. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, I do like how the mysticism of the Red Hood starts. Yep. it's yeah, it's very well written. 
And well, it's, I still think we're going to lead well. towards the the Red Hood Dome mm. eventually. Yeah. They mm-hmm. seem to be they seem to be like giving us enough hints that we are going to get to see the stuff we see in the comics. Yeah. It just takes a little bit of time to yeah yeah. So that's I just still wonder because we've got um, I did a little bit of reading about it, but we've got. Dollmaker, um, obviously not confirmed or anything like that. But, I think it's pretty uh, much confirmed when you have Doctor Dollmaker. Dollmaker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I was. Gonna, but was... I believe that. And correct me if I'm wrong or filling the gaps or whatever. But I believe that in the New Fifty Two, he was involved with the Joker in cutting off his face. Yes. With the yep. rebirth of the Joker. Yes. Yep. Um, so maybe something along the lines of that happens, and because he's got his face cut off, he puts on a red hood. Or it could be the scars. So if they got a fucking scar, like is in like just a scarred mouth route, that's yeah, a pretty bad. I would actually like it if they yeah. went full fifty two with a psychotic, had his face removed and just yeah, yeah. yeah. I will never get over that image of Joker with Alfred's face on. Yeah, so, with Alfred's face on. Haven't you seen, oh, that? seen that? No, I've <laughs> seen him with a, with a with a face stitch on, but I thought it was his own. No, yeah, the the, no. the, the one that you've seen is. That yeah, he gets that's... his own face back and attempts to staple it to his head. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen the that. The other one is he kills Alfred, skins oh, his yeah. face, and pretends to be Alfred. <laughs> like, oh, seriously. Yeah. And the Wayne's, like, the Wayne's... Sorry, Bruce. I think it's Bruce, Tim. I think Dick's there. And they all let him get away with it for a little while. And they're yeah. like, nah, sorry. <laughs> and it's in one of the comics. I swear to cow. I don't know which one it is. I'll, I'll, I'll have a search for that and put it in the, uh, the feedback yeah. thread. See what I can but find. But I looked at it and I'm like, the idea of it freaks me out. Mm, so yeah. I don't like that. I, that Joker is just beyond. It would fit well in the world that they're making to the dark, painful world. Oh, yeah. But my now, God. Y- you brought something up this week that I didn't notice Uh-oh. about Butch. Oh, Butch. My man, Butch. Yeah. There's two things about this. I didn't like the original Butch, but I like this Butch. The Butch that we're getting is very cool. Butch has lost weight as the show's gone he along. Has. He has. So his, his Butch is getting butchy. So maybe Alfred's tease at him being girly. He took tart. <laughs> but um, if you look at the still shot, Victor's actually claimed him uh, by putting a scar over his right between up top near his hairline. It's his right temple. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's yeah, right on his temple, that. you reckon? It's his right temple. Yeah. So I saw the V. I'm like, oh, my good Lord. So he's been oh, claimed. Oh, it it's a V, was it? It's a V. It's a V, yeah. He's been oh, claimed wow. by Victor's eyes, yeah. Huh, that's so cool. Victor's going to look like he's going to make a power play. And Butch is one of his head men. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if Butch is almost Manchurian candidate that we're Zaz just has to say a word to click his fingers or something, yep. and then the activation takes in. Because mm. yeah. he's so cold, but you could see his hands shake. Shake, yeah. Yep. Like he's messed up from something. He clearly wants to. He's, he's resisting mm. the programming somehow. Absolutely, yeah. So, But no, this is a pretty good episode. Mm. Mm. Pretty good episode all in all, I thought. It was good. It was a high sevens. High sevens. I'd say high sevens. It's a good... From the lackluster we've had, I mean... With the, do you want to go to the Thurketh episode? Um, and a couple before that, it was kind of like empty. It felt, it left me wanting more. This mm-hmm. one actually like, filled me up a lot. Nice. Yeah. It, I, felt I agree, good. but I still, we, I still feel we don't know where we're going with the season. Oh, no. I, but at the same time, for like to lead us with some Red Hood and left us with the, the whole statement, the Red Hood's still out there sort of thing. Yeah. And the Hood, in this case, makes the man, not yeah. the other way around. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think we're going to find out. Uh, I, I can see where Braden's coming from with the, like, I'm frustrated because it feels like we don't have a point, because mm. I can see that. Mm-hmm. But I can also see where you're coming from that, yeah, we don't have a point, but when they make really good episodes, they're really yeah. good. Yeah. And it's really frustrating. So it's, it's like, man, if you had a point... It's like if Barry ooh. wore that second glove. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's like if people in that city were awake more than one day a week. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, does that wrap it up for Gotham? Any, any other thoughts? Right. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, then I'm going to throw it over, shoot it over, if you will, to Braden with Arrow. All right. So uh, this week on Batman, I mean Arrow. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, gotcha. All right. So we got Nis- Nissa learns that Oliver is still alive, tries to convince Raz to kill him, even though they do not believe he killed Sarah. Claire tells Laurel that she's the one who killed Sarah unknowingly whilst under the control of Merlin. Laurel tells her she needs to make it right by making a choice not to work with Malcolm. Thea contacts the League and tells them of Mal- Malcolm Merlin's whereabouts. Merlin is captured whilst being attacked by an angry Laurel. Oliver decides to rescue Merlin as he knows that Thea will end up regretting her decision to give him up as it will lead to his death. He goes with Diggle by his side and they are captured. Ra- Raz tells Oliver that he 
does not wish to kill him, but he wants him to be the next Ra's al Ghul. Sorry, Breaker. he wants him to be the next what? Ra's al Ghul. What? We, we discussed this. <laughs> all right, all right, Raish al Ghul. No, Thank no. you. Jeez. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm in habit now, right? I've been saying it for fucking years since Batman Begins. Stop being American. <laughs> That's right. Vic- <laughs> Victoria was invaded by the Americans, now a colonial state of America. <laughs> Continue. Ray Palmer has been hiding for a week, working on the Atom suit, but is too overworked and is at a standstill. Felicity comes in, and after a feed, sleep, and smoke, he works out, works it out, and finishes the suit and takes <laughs> off for. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah, oh. Very well played, sir. <laughs> Points of the day, you get my Cranston. <laughs> wow. As a feeder shower in the smoke, he's good. <laughs> so if I'm outside my house next time, where are you? Just having a smoke, you'll know exactly what I'm on about. <laughs> I'm just going oh, outside Jesus. for a quick smoke. <laughs> 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 That's good. So he wakes it out and finishes the suit and takes it off for a fly in a very Iron Man fashion. Uh, in our Hong Kong flashback, we've got Oliver being debriefed by the military and told he can go free, much to the disapproval of Amanda Waller. He is to return to China with Maseo and Tatsu, and then he can go wherever he wants after that. Uh, as they're boarding a ship, they're attacked by Argus agents, and Oliver escapes with Maseo's son to keep him safe. Voice. That's a pretty good episode. It was a good episode. I agree with you, though. Oliver Queen is becoming Batman for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I must become something different. I must be someone different. <laughs> uh, Diggle's amazing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> diggle, 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 amazing. Diggle, diggle, diggle. Diggle, diggle, diggle. Just sensational. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> sensational. Laurel shit. Uh, uh, Bad at both uh, her jobs. She just... She has failed not only this city, just the concept. Yep. Yeah. Uh, she's just... she just got no logic whatsoever. She's no. Like... She's const. She is a menstruating thirteen-year-old girl. Yeah. That's what yep. she is. Yep. All right. That's just... got, we've, actually we've not got... the not the chocolate eating ice cream boohoo. I'm fat. I'm moody and pissed off for no reason. I can't believe <laughs> I loved you at some point. You loved the money. Shut up. Yeah. Move yep. on. Anyway, sorry. I'll let you guys go. Wow. So we, we've got Diggle, and he's like, you know what? I get what you're saying. It makes sense. I've got you back. And then we've got... Roy. Oh, I, I... And she's going, nah, fuck you, fuck you, nah, nah, fuck you, fuck you, nah. Fuck you. I, I'm going to bring up a picture of mm-hmm. who might... Like, my favourite character of this episode. And I'm going to show it Adam. And we'll understand the context because it was brought up in this episode. While he's doing that, I just mm-hmm. want to say one thing. Thank fuck that photo that came out of the Adam suit had oh, a clear yeah. faceplate so you could see it was Brendan Roth underneath. Wait, that yeah, black faceplate, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, that, Yeah, that mate. fixed this whole suit. Oh, that really did. That was so nice. Yeah, as I say, the, the only thing I noticed, I was saying this to Terry a little bit earlier... He seems to have exposed skin at the base of his neck, and mm. it really shits me. I went back and looked. You can see hair. Uh, oh, you can <laughs> see that. You can see okay. the back of his hair, so it's definitely exposed skin. Which yeah. you would think when he shrinks, that's going to get caught in the folds. <laughs> like, have you ever got your dick caught in a zipper? That's what's going to happen to his fucking neck. Dude, I've had it all the way to the top, so it's just something I about Mary style. Yeah. Is that a Frank or a Bean? It's both. Oh my god. <laughs> What are we uh, looking at here? Um, what do you mean? What? The... Well, I mean, um, is it the, um, the, the... Is it the Frank or the beans? Uh, I, I, I don't know. It looks like, I think it's a little bit of both. Frank the beans! Frank the beans! Bean, Frank, bean. Oh, actually, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to actually put this up on the Facebook thing later on. But it's from it's a photo of Colton Hayes back in his uh, modelling days, his Amber Crombie, like his legitimate Amber Crombie days and Diesel days. Have a look at him now. Then, uh, where have his tattoos come from? It, like the tagline says, "Man, that tattoo removal sucked." Really? Like I'll I'll put it on the page later. But the shirt is interesting. No, 
no, yeah, the shirt's interesting, <laughs> but no, I'm still just more amazed. So it's a full sleeve goes up to the neck. Yeah, no, that's a full, that's it, chest and real? everything. But how the fuck did he? It's laser. Remote. Let's, yeah, like yeah but did, like, did he actually have but, a laser or is he full of shit? I don't know. But like, that'd be put that picture up. And we'll we'll see. Really. We'll send this over to the Facebook community to see it's, what they it's, think. It's kind but, of interesting because yeah. it's from when he's younger. He's got the eyebrow pierced. He's got the lugs, like the you know, the, like the, <laughs> the lugs, like twenty mil washer plates in his ears. He's got the lip piercing. But my lord, still got the same facial expression. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's aged at all since some of those. No, I don't think he has. Um, I've got to give a special note to um Roy and Thea in this episode. Mm, I, Roy I, particularly, I think. There was, it was, sorry, what was that? Roy particularly, I think. Ex- yeah, I, I was hoping you'd say that. Because it's just, he had a very simple message for Thea, mm. and he showed it. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that about this character. They developed him, developed him, yeah, developed him, but also re- not retarded his... Growth. To, yeah, didn't, didn't retard his growth, but made him a very simple, likable character, but not yep. simple. Mm. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah. yeah, it's just very simple. It's relatable. Yeah. He, That's it. He's been because it. Roy has gone from human to superhuman, back to human, mm-hmm. and I think it's it's kind of like akin to if you've ever met somebody who's actually died and been brought back to life, they're normally a different kind of relaxed to most people because of that. They've already mm. shot. Yeah, All right, I'm going to put this photo up now. It it's uh, Roy photo bombing or it's Colton photo bombing, but uh-huh. look what Diggle and Oliver are wearing. Oh yeah, they've already said that they that they shot a yeah. wedding. I, I I that's what I love about this crew. They dick around like that. Yeah, that's the thing, and I love the fact they've already shot it. So maybe this three weeks is just for them, or there's something even more epic. I think the three weeks is to line back up Flash and Arrow again, so that because the Adam shrinks for the first time on Flash. Yeah, what's so even more annoying? He is currently being licked by Katie Cassidy and the girl who plays Thea. What an uh, awesome. Willa Holland. Yeah, Willa Holland. Yeah, well, uh, what an Brandon ass. Roth in the background all just like, yeah. I was Superman once. <laughs> I was Superman Remember once. those days? Yeah. Now I'm Iron Man. I'm in the Adam. Whatever. Yeah, and Superman was like, yeah, now it's I'm, okay. I'm, I'm Batman. I'm Iron I mean, Ant-Man. I'm... <laughs> Whoa, he is. He's Iron <laughs> Ant-Man. Holy shit, he is too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we go. We... Iron Ant-Man. That's from there. <laughs> so, okay. So Ollie is Batman. Roy is Nightwing. Thea is uh, Tim? Tim Drake? No, no, I would put it the other way around. Ooh, Thea's, I Thea's would say Dick. Roy's... Actually, no, Roy's maybe more even Jason Todd. No, more Roy's angry. closer to... If you're going to go from the, the Batman standpoint, Roy would be closer to Tim. He might not have the technical experience, but he's closer to Tim. Dick's the, Dick is the family oh, okay, yeah. for Dick, Bruce. Dick That's why, family. you know, when you think about it as okay. Robin, that Robin, that was the one that Bruce would do anything yeah. to protect was that Robin. And then you got Diggle as Alfred. Yep. Uh, also known as Green Lantern. Uh, Felicity Smoke is post post being shot by the Joker, Barbara Gordon, so yep. Oracle. Yep. Katie Cassidy's... A uh, semi-retired black Batgirl. Is bat, yeah, that, she's Batgirl. Mm-hmm. Detective Lance is Jim, Jim Gordon. Gordon. Uh, so then we've got Ray Palmer is uh, Marvel's Ant Man, Iron Man, and then and we've a got... combination of the Adam and Blue Beetle from DC. Yep. You yep. can see. I remember reading the thing that they originally wanted Ted Cord's Blue Beetle, not the Adam. Yeah. And they kind of spliced that in. You can see that with the fact the Adam suit flies. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's Blue Beetle, bro. Yeah. I'll accept it. Yeah. So yeah, all we need now is a. Uh, what else do we need now? So we've got. We need that... the dog. The dog. We need the dog and we need Jason Todd. That's really it. <laughs> I'm sure Jason Knuckles will uh, argue that he deserves... Oh, uh, yeah. Fuck with yeah, we, that we, quote. we can bring that's that my, up later That's on. my quote of the day. It's fuck with... But, I mean, it was a really good, solid episode. I mean, f- like I said, Roy's a standout for me because his character is so simple and likable in this. Yep. Other times he's just standing there going, look at me, I model for Diesel. Yep. Yeah. You know? mm. He's... He, he, both he and... Uh, I've forgotten the gentleman's... Every time I forget his name. What's Diggle? the name of the guy that plays Diggle? Oh, uh, David Ramsey. David Ramsey. Yep. Both Colton Hayes and Dam- David Ramsey are really, really good at being able to stand in the background mm-hmm. and not, not steal focus away, mm-hmm. but be able to have that look Presence. like everything matters. Because yeah. Roy's in certain things not saying anything, but he's always there in the arrow cave while they do it. That's why, to me, he's, he's more always like Tim. Involved. Because Tim was always the one who stood there yeah. and kind of just quietly listened because it's like, look, it's not my price mm. to get involved, whereas Dick was the one who was like... Don't tell me, mm. like, don't tell me how to feel, Bruce. Yeah. But we'll get into that when we get into the movie a bit later on anyway. Yep. 
Mm. So, look, uh, Brayden, you get any other thoughts or should we move on to our awards this week? No, I think we can move on. It was good at that time. So. All right. Well, the first award will obviously be the Barbara Gordon Honorary Bitch of the Week Award. And, uh, Jeron, your Bitch of the Week. Yep. Most, most definitely Laurel from me. Just, just, Laurel. Yeah, yep. Katie Cassidy, I'm sorry. Barbara Gordon. Katie yeah. Cassidy. There's just, it's, there is only so much bitchy teenage girl I can take. Yeah. It's, it's, we get it. You're hurt. Well, if we have to watch it for the next half a season, it's going to kill me. But, my lord, get over it. Yeah. She's not the only one. Guess She's what? Not the only one. You're not the canary. Be your own canary, but learn how to use a fucking nightstick. Uh, learn how to uh, fight. See, my, my, my award doesn't go to her, but yeah, I think that's really funny that she trained to be a boxer, yet she fights with a stick. No. Yeah. A cop's nightstick. Like, you know, to me, it's like, oh, man. So, like, Malcolm made a point where it's like, you've been training for a sword fight with a bow and arrow. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah and this dumbass has been training with her fist and she's too stupid to throw up. Because the minute she loses the bat and she's like, oh, duh. Yeah. She's literally, <laughs> I, I think she went out and she used a trust fund and got MS. That's exactly what her, she is kick ass. She hasn't no, had no, the no, three no, weeks she, in the gym she yet. Yes, yeah, she has. Right now. She had MS, right? so, if she had she three weeks dominated. in the gym, she'd be taking out punk asses. She's not had yeah. three weeks in the gym. Yeah, she has been taking punk asses, but yes. unfortunately for her, she's trying to take on Malcolm. Who ain't no she punk was probably ass. about three weeks of the gym. Yeah, she did. Like I said, she did. She There were three episodes. Always happens on yeah. a Wednesday or a Thursday. Okay. She was okay, training with Okay, yeah. yep, yep, all yeah. right. She did her training. She did take out punk asses. She'd get her ass whipped a little bit at the same time, but, you know. So, Katie Cassidy is further proof as to why Braden's plan was complete bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so, Braden, in, in, so if realistically, that. Braden follows through with his plan, he can Braden be becomes Black Canary. Yes, he does. So, he's now the Black Canary, <laughs> Braden Ahern. Yes! All right, that's You've good to downgraded, know. You've downgraded, man. Sorry, bro. All right, would you, you guys? To yourself. Would you like to know my bitch of the week? What up? Yeah. Right. I got told uh, by Braden on the on the on our special chat forum that we have. I like private chat where we talk about the finest of teas and mustards <laughs> and, <laughs> and the nicest uh, smelling woods. And we're allowed to give this to a cumulative group. Ah. So I give my bitch of the week award. <laughs> To the Red Hood gang for killing each other anytime anybody put on the fucking Red Hood. Like, n- no offense here, dumbasses, but when you're robbing banks and it's a five man job because you all have a job, don't fucking kill each other. You need the five people. No, Steal the hood if necessary, but don't kill each other. That's short sighted and dumb. Okay, so your main bitch of the week should be the fat English guy. He's step one. They still, they, they, he he might have led the cause of killing people, yeah. but just because he fired the he, first shot, the rest of them are just as dumb. The fat one, at least, was the planning commission. That was pretty clear. The fat one was the brains of the outfit. Yeah, but he didn't have any, he didn't have any reason to shoot Exactly. He had no reason to shoot. Like, he was just envious. Hood, so he shot him. Yeah. The second guy was like, I want the hood because I don't want my girlfriend to leave me. And say, They're all bitches. Don't fine. care. Actually, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the, bitches. Yeah. Although I did completely, thoroughly enjoy that. Oh, I enjoyed it. Too. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed the moment. It's just that's my bitch ass movie of the week. It's like, you bitches. <laughs> Stop being little whores. Oh, you're all dead. I'm sorry. Yeah, you got yourself to blame. You know when you wouldn't be dead if all five of you were there to cover each other's asses, Tards? But no. I did like the Robin Hood reference, though. For yeah. The, the, the Red Hoods. That was good. I did yeah. like that, too. Yeah. So, okay, those are our bitch of the week. Let's move on to the premiere award. Mm. The Award of Elite Excellence with the Brian Cranston Man of the Week Award. Now, uh, who you gentlemen got for your man of the week? I have two. Diggle. Oh, you have two? I have two. All right, Braden's got Diggle, so go and do it, Braden. Just because he's the man, man. <laughs> man. He's the man, man. He's the man's man. Man. Yep. Man. man. <laughs> See, normally in a situation like this, Diggle by default is Cranston for me. Yep. Yep. He is the default Cranston, but I think. Just for the simplicity's sake, um, Colton Hayes, Roy's uh, yep. performance, it's that he showed that side or the character. You can write a script, but you've got to have a guy who can actually, especially a male who can pull off this sort of remorse. Mm-hmm. He yeah. pulled off that very well. It actually tugged at my heart. He was like, wow, he's a kid who is, you know, giving them, giving this family money. You know, what he's, he gave a Boba Fett to the kid for Christmas. Gives they him don't, food. Yeah, gives him food. He do, they don't know it's him, but he just sits there in his bright red Mustang at night. That was my favorite part of the car's red as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, but it's a bright red Mustang in like yeah, a I very know. bad part of town. My other point for that is how does like a bartender who also 
moonlights as Arsenal afford a ninety thousand dollars Mustang, but that's okay. All of the Queen money. He had, yeah, he had that before he was even Arsenal, though. No, 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 he didn't have that Mustang. I'm sure. The Mustang oh, no, he had was an old. It, yeah, it was a maybe vin- he's done it up. He though. No, 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 that was, no, no, that was like an O. That's like an O nine Mustang. Okay. Yeah. Um, and my second Cranston goes... Get the Mustang and uh, Oliver gets nothing. He <laughs> no, he just gets Ducatis. No. Uh, Ollie's got his bike. He's got, he's, that's a Ducati monster, man. <laughs> that's oh, that's, right. that's like a 90 grand bike. Um, oh, and right. is Felipe... Filippo uh, uh, Frante? That's the Mr. one. Mr. Cosplay? Mr. Cosplay. Mr. Cosplay. He also gets my Cranston because actually so far his, his proof today is very humble as well. Mm-hmm. We actually asked yeah. for permission to use his uh, Buster... <clears throat> Buster Booster gold. gold. Booster Gold. Buster. Buster Gold. Look, I You're said... You're a punk ass sucker. Oh, mate. <laughs> like I said, I'm, ex- I'm exhausted. This is like the art. This is how I am after sex, okay? I'm exhausted. I want protein. If I can't have that, I'm You're just exhausted tired. talking about guys you meet on Facebook. Yeah. It's the usual after sex glow for you. And actually, that's normally how sex starts for me. <laughs> With beautiful, beautiful beards. Um, but he gets my secondary Cranston. Just before I give out my my Cranston for the week, there I uh, just want to go back to Diggle for a second from this episode. There was some I love. They're chained up in a prison, <laughs> and Diggs all like, you know, I want to ask you if you'd be my best man. And Ollie's like, yeah. But this is how he asked me. He's like, Oliver, man, we're in some bad place, man. He said man twice, and I'm like, even in prison, Diggle's like, look, man, I don't have time for other words, man. Oliver, He's man. man, man. Now, you imagine on his tube, so he just says, man. <laughs> Diggle. <laughs> man. Man. He was a manly man. It's probably on his Simple brother's. Man. It's probably on his brother's one. It says, "Man, why? <laughs> or why, man? <laughs> why, man?" Uh, now, my crest of the week goes to Thea Queen because Thea Queen proved that she is the most honourable one. Yeah, she sent yep. Malcolm off because it's like the only way I can stop them coming mm-hmm. after my brother is to give them Malcolm. Yeah. The only way I can actually stop all this war and stop Ollie feel like he has to kill himself and all that is to literally say, mm. I'm the one that did it. Here's the sword. Yeah. Mm. Take You want to kill me, kill me, but just end it. Mm. End this yeah. shit. Yeah. That takes a lot of balls. And that for me is why I say that she's the Dick Grayson of it because Dick, that's a Dick yeah. Grayson thing of like, mm-hmm. one of us has to die, I'll... Yep. I'll dive on the bullet if I have to, if it ends yep. the suffering. Yeah. Check out the big balls on Thea once yeah. again. So Thea gets my Cranston this week. Yeah. So she's walking around with almost two Cranstons between the legs. Tongue, tongue. As well, she walks I she's got Cranston earrings at this point. Because <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that... Thea Queen's a classy lady. She's not like J-Law. She's not going to stretch it out <laughs> with some sort of Cranston weight on it. But if you're gonna if you're gonna stretch it out, a Cranston's the way to do it. Oh, I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure Cranston stretched out some in his time. Don't get me wrong, but I more see her as the putting them as the earrings type than uh, stretching no. out her lobes as opposed to stretching out her, her lobes. If you know what I mean. <laughs> and that's the awards for this week. So oh. that brings us into the next segment, which is uh, which is uh, look. I've had some bleeding this week. Uh, and I think I need to. Get it. <laughs> I think I need to get it off my chest because that's where the blood comes from. <laughs> the, my, my nipples, my nipples have been twisted clear off this week. I got some grievances. So and, and that's, men's and pads. Yeah, well, I had to wear you know those runners nipple guards you have to wear for marathons in case your shirt chafes. I had that Vaseline going. None of it was just so much twisting. <laughs> it was just unbelievable. I've got purple nipples. The cows come home. All right. My problem is uh, it's something that I've realised, and we, we've made jokes about it, but it really only sink into me this week how bad it is. Why are there no black people in these shows? <laughs> or if there are black people, <laughs> it's mate. like one fucking family per show. <laughs> Literally, we had we had black black bald guy taking care of Oliver and Thea, <laughs> then he leaves. Black driver comes in for more of the screen time, starts taking care of them as well. So you got that in one city. In the other city, you got black detective and his black daughter. They're, they're just, I don't understand why there's no black people. In, in Gotham, you have fish. That's it. There is one black person, and she's been sent off. So no wonder the doll maker wants it. They don't have black skin. <laughs> what the fuck? Why are there no minor? What happened in the DC world? Oh, wait. Did Hitler... Did Hitler succeed in the DC world? There are no Jews and there are no blacks in this community. But I will tell you... We got Felicity. Yeah, the one Jew. No, no. We also had a uh, Chinaman in Gotham. The one witness to the Red Hood gang. The Chinese are in a lot of shows. There's a lot of Asians. (laughs) 
<laughs> Linda Parks isn't Asian. Is a- no, Asian she's not. Gone. She's Mexican. <laughs> I would call that Asian. No. She looks Me- more Filipino to Mexican she's to me. Un- <laughs> she likes chili. She's Mexican. Case in point. Whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> Rice and weird food. <laughs> Jimmy Chonga. So, you know, that, that to me, it's just where, where are th- Cisco. Cisco's in there. Your minorities, He's Hispanic. Your yeah. minorities are covered on that side. Like, I'm talking the, the really dark complexion. They're just not allowed. Yeah. yeah. The, the, proper, the proper African-American. Kenyans. You want Kenyans. Uh, Maybe if there's an episode where there's a marathon. I don't, I don't want Kenyans because then the Flash is no longer the fastest man <laughs> in the city. No, no, what you don't I want Jamaicans. Want, I just want to know why. What, like, literally, what the fuck happened to all these places? I said there's one black family Ethnic per city. Ethnic cleansing. The final solution. So that, oh, I thought who everybody was in, the Glades, really they're all yeah, black. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The Sorry, Glades. what was that, Brayden? It's not really just DC. Like, go watch The Walking Dead. Black guy comes in, old black guy dies. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, I'll give you that. I mean, I've been waiting for Diggle to die for three seasons now. <laughs> but, yeah, th- my point still remains. It's like, man, 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 man. Um, <laughs> you know, why are there Why are there so few black people in this city? And there's nobody has a problem. Like, everybody's just like, yeah, that's completely normal. I we think like in, these white peoples. I think during um, the uh, Miracle episode, there was a black guy there. I think there's... So there's black people in pr- yeah. If there's anyone, you yeah, have prisoners. They're allowed to be black. I'm talking <laughs> walking the streets free. There's a serious. <laughs> there's fucking a couple problem. of cops. I'm pretty sure in Arrow they were black. I think, maybe a prosecutor. No, I'm stretching. No, I got nothing. Yeah, you're, you're thinking of the British guy. <laughs> no, 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 not Martin, not Martin uh, William Steele. Not him. What if man? I want. Him, I still want My him to come back as still. Steel. But anyway. My point is just still. <laughs> the fuck is going on there? What is going on? Where is the... Where is no the Jews ethnic? and no blacks. That's the rule of golf. So there you go. They're a golfing company. No Jews, no blacks. Golfing company. It's just... Well, at least, at least we know that the black... There's, there's no real black good person on uh, Gotham, so we know Lucius Fox has to be coming. Yeah. Is he black, though? They, may, might, they just might make him white. Or Mexican. Or Jewish. <laughs> Jewish. That would be interesting. Lahayim. <laughs> Lahayim. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what twisted my bat nips. It's just a little quick one, but it's just something that got to me this week. I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, no they, have, they have chased these people out of town with pitchforks. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like your car around our style and city. Fuck off. Oh, you've got money? Yeah, you come in. <laughs> you know what do you do? Oh, you're a driver? Yeah, and you go, mate. <laughs> you might want a Bella Club. You don't own a Bella Club, or you're one of the rare black people, and you come. Yeah, you come. You know what I did love? Like, I really loved about Arrow this week. That Ollie set a dude on fire. That was dope. <laughs> but fangirls suffered a knife through the oh, heart. Oh, farmer for the win! Yes. Absolute farmer. A Take knife. that, fangirls. Yeah, love me some farmer. Get off my bat nip. <laughs> <laughs> Stop tweaking my nips. I love that. Just like, oh, but they're only kissing. They're only kissing until he's all like. I know the formula I need now. <laughs> it was written in her in a lo- in a left labia. <laughs> just, just had to dive in there. No, I, I like to think that's actually probably where she put the password. That's what I, what I think yeah, happened was, was great. You know, at the beginning, how he was picking up the wrong tool, and he was, <laughs> she was like, "Don't do that. You'll blow up the planet." It's because the tool he really needed to use was in his pants the whole time. Once he used it, he was like, "N bracket two minus one three to the power of a billion. Yeah, and then later on he's just doodling Felicity's boobs on like a piece of scrap paper. Well, I've done my suit now. What do I do now? <laughs> That's what the X-ray component is for. So he's just like, I can see your boobies again, and she's like, see, many time you want. He's like, don't ruin the X-ray for me, woman. <laughs> that actually probably, will probably be the biggest downfall. <laughs> like, she's all dressed up. I can see your boobies. Flash. Damn it. <laughs> Why is Barry there? That doesn't make any sense. You no, know, I'm talking. He's just like... come running through. Hey, remember me? <laughs> I hear you like the fuck hero or something now. <laughs> Three way, devil's triangle. I can get some friction. He'll shrink down really full. Climb in there and tell me where the G spot is, and I'll make sure I hit it at like a thousand reps per minute. <laughs> <laughs> or do the thing that Linda was loving. That was it. She's done. So She's yeah, that's done. what's twisted my bat nips this week. All right, well, that brings us into the uh, the feature film for this week. And now for our feature presentation. Night. 
night after night. I watch over this city. But now someone stands in the shadows. Who knows my every move before I make it. Stalking me. It ends tonight. Who do you work for? And it's something very special we're going to do here. Um, I'm going to hand over the reins to Honey Badger. We're going to see if he can not fuck it up. Uh, <laughs> I make know, no guarantees. No, I was going to say, you know, it swings roundabouts. Can't be sure here. Uh, if he does, if he doesn't fuck it up, perhaps we'll let him talk again in the future. If he does fuck it up, well, you know, the ball gag's going back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the 18 and inch. The uh, yeah, I was going to say the 18 inch rubber cock. Same Bane. We now say Terry. Bane, shut up. Get in your corner. <laughs> All right. Well, Terry. Give us your recap extravaganza. Okay, one second. I, this is a very detailed film, so one second. <gasps> At a manor, manor in Sarajevo, Raish Al Ghul ruefully, <laughs> <laughs> make a point to pronounce it properly, ruefully re- realizes he's mistaken in allying himself with the Joker. While his assistant informs <laughs> the Joker. While his assistant informs him that the Joker is Captain Jason Todd, the second Robin. In a warehouse, the Joker brutally beats Jason with a crowbar while Batman races there. Joker then leaves leaves the warehouse and traps a half-dead Jason inside. Although Jason attempts to escape, a planted explosive destroys the building before Batman can rescue Jason. Oh no. Five years later in Gotham City, a masked criminal known as the Red Herd con- takes command of the drug trade, uh, assuring eight prominent drug lords protection from Batman and crime boss, crime boss the Black Mask and more money in return. Also telling them not to sell drugs to kids and revealing a bag full of severed heads. God, this movie is so dark, I love it. Yes. Yeah, I know, right? Elsewhere, Batman intercepts a stolen truck carrying a mazo, an android weapon, and Nightwing, Adam's lover, arrives to help take it down. You mean the greatest character ever created in DC Comics, <laughs> or possibly any comics of all time? Nightwing. Nightwing. Yeah. I can lasers. also just point out... He's got lasers! <laughs> He's got lasers! Voiced oh, by possibly the best voice artist, you get to voice the greatest character of all time. Yeah. Who also played yeah. one of the greatest characters of all time on TV. So yeah. you're talking about Nightwing. And yeah. love Nightwing. And and you mean the guy who like plays a like damn good Riddler every Halloween with his kids and his husband. Yes, him. He's the best. I know, right? Anyway, we'll stop gushing. I out. love Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mercy. The drivers reveal that they were under Red Hood's orders before being assassinated by their employer. Batman gives chase and eventually ends up at the chemical plant that created the Joker, who was the original Red Hood. The current Red Hood confronts Batman and comments before escaping that it's the site of Batman's first great failure. Regrouping Batman and Nightwing check out Red Hood's movements. Since the Red Hood had appeared, drug trafficking is high, but crime as a whole is down in Gotham. Afterward, they interrogate the Joker at Arkham Asylum about the Red Hood. The clown merely taunts them with Jason's death and denies involvement. Angered over his stolen android, Black Mask puts a hit on the Red Hood. <laughs> I, I, I get angry when I lose my iPhone, but that's that fine. Is, that is one of the dumbest sentences I've ever heard. Yeah. Angered over his stolen android. Yeah. <laughs> it's just every day. This bastard stole me an android. <laughs> I told him not to. I told him he could borrow it for the weekend. Ah, <laughs> uh, mercy. Uh who probably hijacks another weapon shipment with Batman and Nightwing interrupting. During a chase over the city's rooftop, Red Hood displays physical skills similar to Batman and Nightwing's. Red Hood then eludes them to a train station where a planted bomb explodes and injures Nightwing's leg. Back at the Batcave, Batman sends Nightwing home and the discovered Red Hood knows his secret identity. Batman also recalls that Jason once used such escape manoeuvres and that he became violent and impulsive as he grew older. Meanwhile, the fearsome Hand of Four... A group of assassins working for Black Mask attacks the Red, Co- Red Hood. He then stalls, stalls them to lure Batman out, and together they incapacitate three while Red Hood kills one. When Batman confronts him about it, Red Hood insists that he's doing what the Dark Knight is unwilling to do by killing criminals who can't be intimidated. Batman offers to help Red Hood, who refuses and leaves. Bruce discovers the body in, body in Jason's coffin is a fake, enraged. 
he visits Raish Al Ghul for the truth. Raish reveals that the uh, the five years previous he commissioned the Joker to distract the dynamic duo during their investigation of one of Raish's terrorist plots. Uh, ow, that's bright. Uh, but with Batman. Ooh, but the clown kidnapped and murdered Jason, which Raish saw was unnecessary. To make amends, Raish chose not to make war with Batman anymore and attempted to revive Jason in the Lazarus pit, which yielded a disastrous result. Jason was driven over the edge by the, cr- the chemicals in the pit and fled. Meanwhile, the Joker abducts Black Mask and his associate and tries to burn them alive in a bid for Red Hood's attention. Red Hood arrives and basically kicks his ass. Batman intervenes and saving Black Mask and his underling but Red Hood gets away with a captured Joker in tow. Jason Hood, uh, sorry. Red Hood takes the Joker to an abandoned apartment and savagely beats him with a crowbar. Smells of irony in here. <laughs> no, no, I do fart. Oh, okay. <laughs> you piss excellence and fart irony. <laughs> that is what my tombstone will say, yes. <laughs> Followed by a comma and then... Man. 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 <laughs> Uh, the same way he was beaten five years ago. He then meets Batman in Crime Alley where they first met and they get into a fight that culminates with Jason holding Batman at gunpoint demanding to know why he has not killed the Joker. Batman says that although he has thought that every day about killing Joker, he cannot bring himself to do it because he knows if he starts killing, he will never stop. Jason give Bat- gives Batman a gun and an ultimatum. Either Jason will shoot the Joker or Batman has to shoot Jason. Batman silently de- uh, declines participation, drops the gun and walks away. Angry and hurt, Jason shoots his gun at the back of his former mentor, but Batman do- dodges the bullet because, you know, he's fast like that. Then disables Jason's gun with a battering. <laughs> Jason activates a bomb and slumps to the ground, defeated. Batman tries to, tr- Batman tries to defuse the bomb, but the Joker stands in the way, determined to see that they all die together. Batman knocks the Joker aside to try and save Jason. As the explosive goes off, when the smoke clears, the Joker and Batman are revealed to have survived, but Jason is nowhere to be found. The aftermath of the incident, a news report reveals that the Joker has been returned to Arkham and Black Mask is back on the streets after paying a million dollars bail. <laughs> At the back Only end, in Gotham. Yeah. Alfred Pennyworth asks, <laughs> asks Batman... <laughs> Batman should take down the memorial holding Jason, Jason's old Robin costume. Batman refuses, saying nothing has changed. The film ends with a flashback of Jason's first day as Robin, in which the boy declares that he is the best day of his life. And scene. Very good adaptation of a comic book, this one. Yeah. Altered the scenes that had to be altered, but kept in the, 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 the meat and the bones, the skeleton, as it were. Yes. Really, really solid film. This All one. killer, no filler, basically. Yeah. Now, uh, you brought up uh, Jason shoots the shot at the back of Batman's head and Batman dodges. Mm. Do you know why he's able to do that? Are you going to say because Batman? Because to the gun. No, no, no. Here's why. Like he could... Here's why. Because he's a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a swerve. That was almost like a red herring. No, anyway. Sorry. It's fine. A red hooding. A red hooding. <laughs> yeah, no, the, I... Once I, I feel like we, we're, we're stuck where we were a few weeks ago where it's like, damn, it's a good film. Yeah, that's, uh, all, that's all hold each other's penises and yeah. sing Kumbaya. It's, how do, it's how do we not things. turn this into a circle jerk? Uh, yeah, basically. I'm not eating that sayo, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Braden, you're it. Um, <laughs> he has no idea what we're talking about, I don't think. I think it's Bloody Neil Patrick Harris, though. Fantastic. Oh, <laughs> so, man. He's good at everything he does. It's annoying. But it just, once again, it, this movie just proves why I love... Dick Gray, and what I always say whenever I bring this up, he's Batman without the fucking broody brokenness. Yeah. Because yeah. he's as kick-ass as Batman. He's the he's Batman hardcore, we should have. But he just, instead of Batman, Batman's distraction is intimidation. I'm big, I'm bulky, I'm going to stare at you until you shit yourself. Yeah. Dick doesn't have that. He's, ro- he's you know, he's he's wiry. He's, he's lean, he's robust. Yeah, he, he's acrobatic. Yeah. So his way of distracting them is to to rattle and, and crap on yeah. because it disorients you because you're like, well, you shut the fuck up and let me hit you. Yeah, basically. And you know, that's what I love about him. I, I love Dick Grayson. So, so essentially you are Nightwing. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up and let me hit you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no problem. All right. Yeah, I can see that. That's fine with me. <laughs> that, that's cool. I mean, I'm the best character on this podcast. You sort of said that from day one. Yeah, since birth. You're right. <laughs> Best in the world. That's what it said on my nappy. <laughs> Best in the world. Yeah, plastered across your ass. Yeah, I came out and like, 
Dakota personality started playing. I'm like, sunglasses on, just strolled out, took a knee, put my arms out. Slicked back hair with a pit. Yeah, looked at my fake watch and I was like, it's clabbering. How do we turn this into a wrestling podcast? Back to Batman. <laughs> Whereas mine was like glass shatters. Yeah, that's how it, that's how it started for me. Yeah, because everybody dropped everything like, oh, God, is He's that ugly. human? <laughs> that's right. That was a heavy bad way. And I didn't give I a I didn't damn. know a woman could give birth to a rhino. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as, yeah. My horn is prized by many. Held by few. <laughs> <laughs> of all the backfires in all the world, you had to give me that one. Yeah, Bray, what do you think of this film? <laughs> well, this is probably the first... This is my introduction to animated Batman movies, actually. So this popped your cherry? Yeah, cool. This, this, yeah, this popped my animated Batman cherry. What a way to pop your cherry, though. That's like Fifty Shades was, of Grey style. Well, I've got to recommend, <laughs> if you are hesitant about watching animated <coughs> movies because you think they're for kids or whatever, watch this one first. It yep. will change your mind. It really mm-hmm. will. This movie yeah. is very dark. Yeah, and it's yeah I don't know. It's great. The characters are great. Um, Joker's fantastic in this. Uh, it, it feels a bit. I feel a bit dirty saying that a Joker, aside from um, Mark Hamill, Heath Ledger or Hamill, is good. But this Joker is very, very good. Oh, yeah, whoa, very good whoa, movie. whoa, 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 whoa! Are you trying to say you didn't like that redheaded kid last week? Because he might be the best Joker of all time. You <laughs> yeah, fucker! Fuck. Just <laughs> stop. Just. Yeah, Just stop. Lie. That's that's a lie. Stop it. That's not trolling. That's a lie. And you're hurting no one but yourself. <laughs> Go gonna, in your corner. You're going to lose I, our editing budget, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I, it. I, I agree with you, Braden. And I, but I think it's very hard to make a Jason Todd mm. film or anything without it being dark because ultimately mm. he's the one the fans chose to kill and they mm. killed him mm. like that in the comics. Mm. Yeah. Except it's even, in, in the comics, it's a step worse because... The comics dealt with the fact Jason was a street kid and an orphan. Mm. Mm. And through Batman, he finds his birth mother yeah, and goes to see her and starts to reconnect with her. And the Joker turns up and kills her in front of him. Mm. And then when Batman turns up, Joker gouges um, Jason's heart out with a crowbar mm. and then throw, basically throws the crowbar at Batman and is like, I won. Yeah. And because Batman's just so shocked, he doesn't even kind of know what to do his first reaction is to go to Jason Joker sets up a series of bombs and Batman basically runs out of the building gets blown away in the blast holding Jason Todd in his arms that's where the um, that image comes yep. from yeah yeah that's the, the famous death in the family yep. comic book yeah and it's, you know, it is a very powerful moment obviously it defines Bruce's life with the mm. yep. the suit and whatnot and, and mm-hmm. the, the only thing that doesn't get addressed in this film I guess to bring it up just in case anybody's interested in the comic book lore mm-hmm. which they should be Jason is brought back by one of the events in the crisis. Mm. And he wakes up in, in Not his coffin. Not Lazarus Pit? Or... No. Oh, no, no. In, in, the, in the comics, he, um, he's brought back one of... The, there's one of two stories, but the official comic one, the one that came later, I guess if you look at nowadays how there's New 52 and Pre-52, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there's two different ways Jason came back. The, is the, way you can look at. The, the New 52 one is Lazarus Pit, Went mm-hmm. crazy. Yep. All that. The other one, the much more hard, hard hardcore one, the crisis resets a lot of things. Mm-hmm. The, uh, I'm fairly certain it's the second crisis, Infinite Crisis. Yep. They all reset a lot of things anyway. Resets a lot of shit, and basically that one was about bringing all the different multiverses into one universe. Yeah. So that you could then have all the flashes exist in one universe. And, yeah. And all that as opposed... Because theoretically, for 20-some odd years, Batman and Superman were not in the same universe. No. So anyway, so in in this other one, everything gets reset, mm-hmm. and the world falls into place around everything, mm-hmm. mm. and Jason Todd resets in the coffin, Ooh, shit. and has to break and dig his way out of his own grave, yep. and that's what drives him insane. Yep. Um, and he's already nutty enough, and he can't remember who he is and all that sort of stuff. Yep. And then he starts getting his memory back, so he starts following Batman, mm. sees that the Joker is still alive, and that's yeah. what brings back all of it. And yeah. he goes completely insane because he basically feels betrayed by Batman that yeah. he's left this person alive. And we end up in the same situation. Jason Todd does the yeah. ultimatum of like, how, how could you? Yeah. I understand everything you know, else, but how the fuck yeah, is how, he still how alive? How is he still alive? And Batman's point is 
if I kill him, he wins. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I cannot let... If I let him win, mm. they all win. Yeah. It has all been for nothing. I cannot let him win. Mm. And it's so painfully heart-wrenching because Jason cannot understand it and Bruce can understand Jason's pain, mm. but it's just... It's that yep. whole motive of like, I can't... Everything you and I did together will be pissed away. Yeah. So that that's the original comic book one. Yeah. This does a fantastic job, though, of making it less convoluted, yeah. but still make perfect sense. Because if you've been dead that long and you get thrown in the pit, you are going to come back mental. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, I love Bruce Greenwood yep. as Batman. I love him as a voice actor. Yep. He has that calming, smooth voice. He's, He's almost like that voice of reason everyone needs in the back of their head. If it was his voice in the back of your head going, don't do that, yep. you'd be like... That's fine. He's actually, the in terms of outside of the ones where we obviously gush about, Kevin Conroy to me is animated Batman. Yes, absolutely. Mm, so yes. I'm talking outside of the yeah, sphere yeah, no, of Kevin no, Conroy. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the best voice I've ever heard mm. in terms of that, and I can't remember which JLO one it's from, but we'll get there eventually. Yeah. Mark Harmon, the main yep. guy from NCIS, yes. does Superman in one. Yes, he does. And yep. his Superman is so perfect because Geek. it's that yeah, real yeah. timbered, calm... Yeah, like, and I, I, I really appreciate those. Yeah, when, when actors do those sort of voices. So yeah, you're right. This yeah. Batman, and I think you need this Batman because you can't have intense Batman because Jason Todd's too intense. Oh yeah, you yeah. can't have too lighthearted Batman because Dick's running around. Yeah, so you need the background. You need yeah. the bat. This is Batman who is a father. Yeah, father with dad. two kids who are, and he's just like, Fuck it's like he's the dad Jesus night. Kids. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. the kids going nuts. God damn. So, so that's Alfred. Get me the nappies. Yeah, yeah, and, and that, that's why I think you need a guy like this to, have to do it, to add that kind of yep. gravitas to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Jensen Ackles as uh, Jason, Jason Todd and the Red Hood. Now, now you, this is a mini bat twist for you, isn't it? This is it's a slight... A, bat twi- a nipple tweak, as it were. Somebody's a, tweaking your bat nipples. Yeah, Flicking tw- them? Flick, flick. Rubbing ice on them, maybe. No, no, that's... No. Um, Pegs? <laughs> nipple no. clamps? No. That's no? that's something different. So it's just a, it's, it's, just it's a, a little bit of pain, just like a flick, but it's not enjoyable pain. Oh, yeah. Um, he does a wonderful job. I think he actually does. He brings a lot of intensity to J- uh, Jason Todd. Yeah. Because he's about at the time of film, I think they're about the same age. Yeah. Right. So and I we all know him from. That's if anyone's uh, listening who doesn't know who he is, he's the attractive brother. Oh wait, they're both attractive. He's the short haired brother from Supernatural. Um, uh, just to bring back our connection that we love. He was also on Dawson's Creek. He was. He was. And <laughs> I just worked out another thing. He's also mates with Steve Amell as well. Hey. <laughs> wait a minute. I guess he didn't want to wait. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do this again. <laughs> For his life to be over. But anyway, continue, continue um, with what you're saying because right, I, I want to know where it now. Okay. What will it be? <laughs> he, he does a wonderful job. Means a lot of intensity, but he's known to be quoted as saying, I played a Batman character, I deserve to be in a Batman movie. Now, hmm. by that theory, I can't wait for this. Kevin Conroy's cowl is okay. about 20 years late, Mark Hamill's face paint is about 20 years late, and technically he's already been in a Batman movie. Hang on, by that theory. <laughs> One time, yeah. I cooked a really good burger here. I think I need to be the head chef at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> that is the theory. That's the logic here. But actually, oh, odd, hang on, hang on. Odd, oddly hang, enough... Oddly, yesterday I trained. Yeah. You deserve a... I deserve my own city to protect. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got MS. Dude, I am... You've saved I am 300... two weeks away, two weeks away from punk ass kicking. You've saved yourself 300 grand, though, by following the formula, by Braden's formula. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, you, can, you two at home can buy Braden's formula for $300,000 and nine ninety nine. That requires mild brain lesions <laughs> and the occasional loss of sensation in the limbs. But yeah, but um, one thing I wouldn't be insulted if they gave Neil Patrick Harris a, a role as Dick Grayson in one of the movies. I would not be offended by he'd that. He'd need to put on a little bit he, of bulk. He would, but I at think the same he'd be time, able to bulk up. He would be. And I think I he's personally got would rather pres- see him as the Riddler though. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Riddler's been really tainted plus this guy who's doing Riddler in Gotham is really owning the part. Oh yeah, um, but, but he's actually, owning the part of that Riddler but imagine but no, proper psychotic MPH. Yeah, but look at that. 
Look at his face there. Oh yeah. He's he's got he's a oh, I don't know he'd be like forty something now. Yeah. But he's Doogie, got that Doogie's face. Getting yeah. into his. He is. But he's got that face. He's got that playful face. So if you bulked him up to like a solid gymnast, yeah, and gave him the night wing suit, I would. I'd just go. Yep. Cool. Well, the no other worries. thing as well that you you could theoretically do because. If Nightwing is in a Batman film, mm-hmm. you don't need Nightwing cruising around as Dick Grayson. Yeah. And you don't need Nightwing shirtless. Yeah. Give him the... As painful as it is, you did it for Michael Shane in Man of Steel. Yep. Give him the slightly padded rubber suit so he looks. Yep. Yep. Got no issue with a rubber suit if it's, you know, if it's going to add to the part. And a Nightwing suit oh, yeah. would look great with the kind of yeah. molded shit on it. Oh, yes. Mm. Absolutely. Um, also, uh, your second favourite animated Joker... Uh, John DiMaggio. Mm. Well, I was referring that to as Braden's second favorite. Oh, I see. Mm. Okay, good. All right. So, I mean, they've all done. Fan- it's it's one of those movies that it's it's solid on a lot of levels. I don't know why they bought in Amazer. They just did. But I think everybody wants because an he's got lasers. <laughs> he's got lasers. But um, it's, I think that was just more for Dick Grayson, for the acrobatics. And you know, yeah. the electrical spikes he shoves in people. It was a showcase piece. Showcase dick, which but you kind of want to do because dick. he's the best. Showcase dick. Yeah. Everyone likes it's a showcase, showcase dick. dick. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just one of those solid movies. It's annoying. You know, I yep. wish we had like a Scooby Doo <laughs> that we could do, but like, it's just. <laughs> I've just. I was like. Scooby-Doo yeah, I wish there was a Scooby Doo. We could do it. Like, oh no, we did it. And it was shit. Yeah. But I remember same, now. We've had two good episodes, and now we've got a really. We've got a good We're movie. We're hitting a good so run like, of films. It's annoying. I think we should need to start throwing like an episode of Buffy in there every, every once in a while so we at least get a villain of the week. It's just. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Joss Whedon, get back to us on that one, would you? Um, so, no, don't worry. We'll, we'll have arguments covered yeah. next week. We'll get to that at the end of the show. Oh, okay. But uh, but yeah, don't worry. There, there's arguments coming, Terry. Fair enough. Yeah, no. They... You you make me promises. Oh, Kelly Kelly Hugh was in this as well as Miss Lee, which I believe was the assistant. Uh, mm-hmm. Kelly Hugh also plays Deathstroke. Uh... Lady Deathstroke in X Men Three, the, one oh. with the bitch with the nails that come out of her fingers. Oh, okay. But she's she... in. Uh... She's China White. Yeah, China White. Yeah. So she's getting used quite a lot. Kevin Michael Richardson is Tyler Bamf- Bramford. I don't know who the hell, which one that was. I don't remember. So, you know, Bruce Tim is Riddler. I think he's done that a couple of times as well. So yeah. it's they're all part of the DC family now. It's just even though Jess and Eccles feels the need to, you know, be given a role. Prick. Um, so, yeah, <clears throat> it's one of those. It's it's like a 9.5. Yeah, it's up there. I've, <laughs> I've, I've got a, yeah, sorry, I've got another comparison. Okay. I host a... Uh... <laughs> Mediocre podcast. How dare you, sir? I host a <laughs> fan loved, yeah. amazingly edited podcast. It's in the top 187 in Italy. I, d- I deserve <laughs> to be on the radio. I, was, I thought you were going to go for the whole Rupert Murdoch thing. I deserve my own enterprise. <laughs> I wish there was a camera in here so you could see the look of just like, <laughs> that was literally the light bulb moment of like, you know, that Back to the Future where he's yeah. like, you should, yeah, he's going to be mayor. Mayor! I could run for mayor. <laughs> In fact... Say, what do you let those boys push you around like that for? Well, they're bigger than me. Stand tall, boy. Have some respect for yourself. Don't you know if you let people walk over you now, they'll be walking over you for the rest of your life. Look at me. You think I'm going to spend the rest of my life in this slop house? Watch it, Goldie. No, sir. I'm going to make something of myself. I'm going to night school. And one day, I'm going to be somebody. That's right. He's going to be mayor. Yeah, I'm going to... Mayor. Now that's a good idea. I could run for mayor. A colored mayor. That'll be the day. You wait and see, Mr. Carruthers. I will be mayor. I'll be the most powerful man in Hill Valley. And I'm going to clean up this town. Good. You can start by sweeping the floor. Mayor Goldie Wilson. like the sound of that. And yeah, so it'd be excellent. But yeah, that we're, we're stuck. I agree with both of you. This is nine point five. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go into spoiling anything with too much bitching or, or anything like because there's nothing to bitch about. Watch it. Yeah, literally, this one gets the absolute top of the recommendation. Yeah, watch it. Yeah, I have actually seen one that tops this. I've seen oh, one, I look to and that. it's a new release. Atlantis. And it's, yeah, Throne yeah. of Atlantis. Oh, it's f- well, fucking. We'll it's fucking phenomenal. 
And uh, if you do, if you are interested in reading the, I guess the the easiest to read comic of all of this, because you know when you've been around for forty years, there's a lot of retellings. It can yeah. get confusing. Yeah. There is actually a trade set that got put out by DC. It's just simply called Under the Red Hood. It comes in a two-volume set. Mm-hmm. Gives you everything you need to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes you very much inside the head of Red Hood. Um, and that, that, I think, is what makes it such a great comic because you get you get to see a lot of this film from his... Uh, sorry, a lot of this story from his perspective really deep into how he's feeling. And that's ultimately what this, this, this story is about feelings. It's about one son feeling abandoned, one son feeling like he's ready to take the mantle from his father and the father basically stuck in the middle wanting to do what's best for all his kids. That's what this film is. Yeah. No, that's, it's, it's one of those weird family films. But it's about family. It's not necessarily yeah, for the family. It's not for the family. It's yeah. not for the, it is not for the kids. It's not for the kids. Vince McMahon says no. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's this week's film. So mm. let's move it on into our final segment for the week. Mm. This is, of course, Letters from the Bat Sack. And uh, I've got a question. Excellent. It comes from a, who I think has to be has to be in the top three super fans of all time on this show now. Easy. Oh, like, he rocketed out of like out oh, of he, nowhere. He boosted, you might say. No, no, no. He just came out of nowhere. Just, you know, just, just went straight to number one. Just, it's Mr. Cosplay, <laughs> and he's sent us in a question, which is this. He's he's uh, some of you might not know this if you're new listeners. If you don't know who Mr. Cosplay is, he's uh, how dare you, sir? He's on our he's on our homepage with a beautiful picture of him as Booster Gold. Please go check it out, like it, and share his other pictures because he's excellent at his cosplay. But what you might not know is that in the off-season, in the cosplay downtime, you've I, got I, the pre-season, yep. the, the actual season, and the post-season cool-down. Yeah, in, the, uh, in the cosplay post-season, he likes to sport a bit of facial hair, and uh, he's, he's, he's become like one of us. He's become very attached to the beard. Mm. And his problem now ah, is that ah. he wants to cosplay, but there's very few heroes with a beard. So he, he wants us, wants our opinions, and if we can think of any really good characters that he could either have his full beard or something that he can at least keep a bit of beard and go with. Now, now I've had two. Mm. My two are uh, Oliver Queen on the island yep. at the end when he's got mm. the big beard and the raggedy clothes. That's easy. Salvos. Yep. Let's go to your yep. local thrift shop, rip up some pants. Listen you don't even Macklemore. need shoes. Listen to Macklemore while yeah. you're doing it. You know, you just, just you go complete hairy man. You need the long hair. You know, if you know what, if you go full hairy man and don't bathe for a year, and people give you shit, you could be like, I was preparing for this part for one year. That's how in character I am. Mm. I've returned so, to save so the that, city. Yeah, exactly. So you've got that one. The other one mm-hmm. is post getting his hand cut off, Aquaman. I was about to. Yeah, I was going to agree with that man. one. That is the that, that is a man who in the DC or any comic book world, if you're like shave that beard, he'd be like, Why don't you grow a set of testicles and grow one? Mm. How dare you insult the beard of Atlantis? How dare you, sir? <laughs> I stab you with my trident hand. <laughs> there was fire and a guy on a seahorse, and I killed a guy with my trident hand. <laughs> <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. It jumped up a notch. It did, didn't it? Yeah, I stabbed a man in the heart. I saw that. Brick killed a guy. Did you throw a trident? Yeah, there were horses and a man on fire, and I killed a guy with a trident. Brick, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. You should find yourself a safe house or a relative close by. Lay low for a while, because you're probably wanted for murder. (laughs) Oh, God. It's... For me, like, I I follow a lot of cosplay in the League of Legends realm. Yep. And what the big thing is lately has been uh, the cross-genders... Mm-hmm. So, like, you have a male character redone by yeah. a female, and it actually looks really different. So, for me, maybe you could actually do one of those cross genders. Say, you take, um, oh, what's a good one? Like a female character. Yeah, like a male. female character. So, you could do like a Wonder Woman, but like something different. So, like, that'd be fat Wonder Man. Yeah, Wonder Man. Mm-hmm. Or, um, you could do like, say, post apocalyptic, say, Shazam. Like how in one of the animated oh, movies, yeah. he's got all the scars on his face. And if you trimmed up the beard, so it's like, um, you looked almost like, uh, what's the guy's name out of. Um, Gerard Butler? Yeah. Yeah. Go as. See that mind read right there. Or, yeah, or you look. Yeah, so like, have fun with, like, from, from what I understand of cosplay, like, lately in Adelaide, we've had a lot of. We had a, some complaints in regards to um, cosplayers. 
with uh, young teenage boys being over handy. So what you do, you sort of take that sort of um, sexual icon away from them and actually have a male like f- gender flip. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you know, and to me, it's that interpretation of a character sometimes as yep. well. So have fun with it. That's the idea of comics and, and cartoons. Have fun. That's the idea, yeah. and it inspires you and can inspire you to go on and you know write your own comic or short exactly. indie comic. So that's the that's it's a fun thing. You don't sit yeah. there slaving over like the Booster Gold uh, cosplay and go, "Fuck, this is boring." Just yeah. wish I just didn't do this. You're doing it because you're having fun. Yeah. Go as Daniel Bryan. That's wrestling, man. You keep going into things that are Doesn't matter. He's I've a got, superhero. I've, he's my fucking <laughs> superhero. Um, Midget with a beard. I'll give you. I'll give you another one. Yeah. I thought of another one. Or another two, actually. Three. Yeah. Three. Yeah, okay. I've got a few. I've got a few. Oh, sorry, bro. I'll, I'll let you have yours in a oh, sec. Yeah, right. We've got um, Superman at the end of time. Yes. All you could do is grey out the wings, but you can have the beard. Yeah. Wolverine, Days of Future Past, stuck in the yeah, when he's in the future. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the the last one I came up with was technically a superhero. Yeah. Don't know how you feel about him, but Big Daddy, the Eleventh Doctor. Oh yeah. Used to get locked up in shit, and he'd always end up with these big, fat, crazy beards because he'd be yeah. locked up for however long. Yeah. Bearded up prisoner doctor. Nice. Mm. Now, Bray, what do you yeah, got well, for him? What, I had what the, cosplay uh, you got? Wolverine. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, Thor, or even Odin, if you wanted to. Ooh, Odin. Odin. Oh, a big, and Filippo's kind of like stocky. Solid. So he yeah. could be like a young buck Odin as well. Yeah. yeah. That's yes. very cool. That one's nice. Yep. Or even uh, Beast from X Men. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Got another three. You've yep. got the. Uh, wait, speaking of Thor, you got the the blonde, the mm-hmm. blonde guy with the goatee. Yeah, yep. could be him. You've got that Hell Warrior dude with the long hair and the big beard. He's always eating. Oh, Hagrid. <laughs> the, the, the Hagrid. Yeah, the Hagrid looking. Fella. Yeah, Hagrid, look, Hagrid from Harry Potter. There you go. There's yeah. another one. <laughs> um, and then well, any of the wizards from <laughs> Harry Potter except Snape, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then my last one, obviously, it requires a bit of shaving and a bit of trimming, but obviously, you could go as either uh, Tony Stark yeah. or Ray Palmer being Tony Stark when he's been up for a week. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Just on that, did everybody else notice that? Yeah. How much yeah. it was just like, Pretty dude, smart. look more like Tony Stark. Be more. <laughs> we need more Stark. All I was thinking of that was just Stark. like. I really thought he was just like, you know what I'm going to do? Two birds, one stone. I'm going to be a superhero show and I'm going to petition to take over from Robert Downey Jr. (laughs) All in one fell swoop. Look, he's been a superhero twice. He deserves it. Well, he's about to do the crossover. (laughs) He deserves it. He's He's... been it twice. He deserves it. (laughs) Him and Jason Eggles are like petitioning. He deserves to get some MS. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I'll I'll see what I can come up with. Hellboy. Hellboy. Yeah? Yeah. Hellboy. Hellboy. All right. So superheroes. Well, I've got... You can do video game characters. I will go... Uh, I'll put the pictures up later on for reference. Uh, Graves, he's a uh, outlaw gl- gunslinger with some nice chops who chews on a big fat cigar. Mm-hmm. You've got Brahm, a big Norwegian dude tat- covered in tattoos, and his only weapon's a massive shield. He's a tank. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else we got? We could do. No, he's bald. He's bald. So you could there's... do Joel, towards the end of it, Joel from The Last of Us. Yep. Abs- oh, Joel from The Last of Us. Yes, the dude uh, Galahad from The Order. Yes. Has a yes. wicked mutton chop mo mm-hmm. flavor save combination. Um, I was looking at it like, damn! I wish this was oh. eighteen eighty six so I could wear that. Mm-hmm. The uh, you can do the main character from Assassin's Creed Rogues because he's the Irish Irish yep. assassin who goes nuts. Uh, there's this there's a plethora. Like, and look, if you want to get really kind of, if you really want to scare people, because you know sometimes you want to cosplay it up, you want to have a good Halloween scare. Mm-hmm. Charles Manson. Oh, Charles Manson. Oh, the other one from League of Legends, Trindamir. Is a it's actually another one. He's like a berserker sort of guy, so he's got a, a very chunky beard. Planet Hulk. Planet Hulk. Um, mm. There's a plethora out we there. We have now. Found, there you go. There, I think, it, I ten, think, years. I think ten years. Ten years of the cosplay. Years. You're welcome. Once you have children, you'll stop having cosplays. And... No, there's no he won't. Once he has children, he then just has better accessories. <laughs> <laughs> like, see, you go, you go. Once you have children, my way. I have a kid, right? You've I'll got be, to actually, hold on. If you've got a kid. You've got to prove it's yours. Yeah, that she's got to prove it. <laughs> That's um, one. sorry. I do apologise. There'll be two things. Obviously, there'll be the bat cycle with my Robin, <laughs> or conversely, the I'm bat pram. I'll get a wheelchair, boot around a wheelchair, dress it up as a little baby gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> so you're Wells, and it can be the gorilla. <laughs> it's Garad, yeah. See, <laughs> multi layered. Here's another one. Beard. Go as Garad. Go as Garad. Garad. Yeah. Zod. 
go as Zod. Zod has Zod. appeared. A proper Zod, yeah. That other, the big bulky Jor-El? dude from Superman Jor-El? 2. jor Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he goes Russell Crowe's Jor-El, which I actually prefer of Malin Brando's. <laughs> Controversy. Yeah, no, no, you're right. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, because that was Marlon Brando who'd stopped caring at that point. That was the point. I'm just here for the paycheck. Yeah. Um... Dude, like, we've given you at least 12 years. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to yeah. go. Okay, so for when he has kids, he can do Wally West or Impulse. He dress the kids up as a Wally West or Impulse. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got all the Robins. Oh, of course. Uh, Speedy. If you have a, Arsenal. If you have a baby girl yep. with MS, you can have her as Oracle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> dude, if, as soon as someone said MS a couple, like, 10 episodes ago... Wow, it's 10 episodes ago. 10 episodes ago, we knew that was going to be a recurring joke. Yeah. Um... As soon as I got MS in my life, I knew it was going to be a recurring joke. No, that was you. <laughs> you. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's a lot of that's a lot of beards. So I think we yeah. saved it there, and of course we've forgotten one very important one. Yeah. Oliver Queen. I was going to say, oh. yeah, you said Oliver Queen. No, you said Ollie on the island with the big bushy beard. No, I'm talking trimmed? general. I'm talking just every run of the mill, run around the city. I'm not a superhero, even though I have the same beard in and out of life. Oliver Queen. <laughs> Pointy hat. I thought you were about to say you could go Oliver as Queen. Red Thunder. That's what I thought you were about to say. I would, be, <laughs> I would be honoured. If if he dressed if, if if Mr. Cosplay ever cosplays as me, that would be an honour. <laughs> People will still be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but it would be an honour. <laughs> I trained for three weeks at a gym. It's okay. Hey, occasionally, just like one leg just goes a little bit numb. He's going to punch it. And they're like, piss off, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. There's a special level of hell for me. I swear to God. I'm pretty sure it's called the throne. I, I, I think I'm already in that level of hell having to know you. Braden, <laughs> did you get any questions this week? Yeah, so I'd like to welcome back. Um, I'd like to, I'd like to call him our uh, first Avenger because or, or <laughs> Captain America of our fans. So, he, so he's the Captain America to our Avengers. <laughs> yep, yep. The Steve Rogers um, Captain. He really is the Steve Rogers. He is he's the Steve Rogers. <laughs> he's reverse Steve Rogers. Not even <laughs> Steve Rogers. <laughs> uh, I, oh, I'm sweating. Uh, Jesus. But yeah, Miss, Mr. Crossfit's back with a question. He would like to know, who do we prefer, Joker or Loki? That's easy for me. Yep. I can answer that in three seconds. Joker. Loki. Yeah. Whoa. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I do have a I'm lying. (laughs) See, now if the question was Thor or the Joker, I'd be sitting there all like, whoa. (laughs) Whoa, you are. That is a tough, but Joker or the Loki, it's like, man. Yeah, it's Joker. One, 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 like, likes to pretend that he causes chaos. One fucking is chaos. chaos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh no, it's just it's Joker. It's just yeah, it is Joker. Cause he's un- had, it's, the only exposure I've had to Loki anyway is the Thor movies and Avengers. That's the only time we really get to see Loki. Yeah. So yeah. and sometimes he's quite low key. Anyway. Yeah. Yes. The pun gun on stun. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Edit that bit out, bitch. No. <laughs> Do not edit that bit out. <laughs> Leave him looking like a fool. I don't, it's, it's, do you realise how much you'd have to edit to I mean, not look like a fool? <laughs> Why do you think our edit budget is so high? <laughs> what we get left is the parts where they're like, eh, this is the least foolish bit. <laughs> People don't know this is a 13-hour show normally. <laughs> and I cut out, or not I, we cut out <laughs> all of your shit. No. Man, I nearly eight. broke kayfabe there. That got close. <laughs> <laughs> kayfabe, you son of a bitch. Kayfabe. <laughs> Whew. Uh, nah, I'm, there's parts of me that like Loki, but Joker's the one who just goes, oh, that's the line of the sand, takes a dump on it, and just keeps skipping. Yeah. So that's why I like him. Yeah, hey, I like Loki as well. But yeah, yeah. Joker is... It's Joker. Let's, let's just look at the, the their... Brass tacks. Look what we've done this week. In the film, and I guess what, what you would call Loki's best known moment, right? Because mm, I yeah. count what what we saw in this week's film as Joker's best known moment, at least comic book oh, wise. Fuck yeah, yeah. Right? One dude <coughs> brought a galaxy in to fight his war for him. The other guy set the protege up yeah. so that he could kill the mother in front of him, then kill the protege, 
to mess with the original yeah. master's head. Yeah. Mm. It's that's not even that is there like, is no, there like is, I said last week. It's not brain. There is psychotic <laughs> and then there is the Joker. <laughs> and that, my friends, is it that is just a whole different level of Tom Foolery. Yeah, why not? That's yeah, just That's all you can really get. There's no words. Just Tom Foolery. You know, that's the kind of shit that in real life you would just like if you said that in a courtroom, people would just be sitting there like even the judge would be sitting their mouth open like Whoa. This motherfucker crazy. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's that's one of those things where you can be like it proves it proves that he's not insane, but at the same time <laughs> yeah. it proves that he is because you can your brain can only think of that if you are yeah. insane. Yeah. But, but you can't be insane lo- in order to pull it off. Yeah, but it's he puts just, a logical reason behind the insanity. Yeah. It's just like I I chaotic reasoning. Yeah. It's like no. Just just I don't even want to think about it. So, yeah, so, it's, so it's unanimous Joker. Yeah, Joker. Yeah. But right. I actually do like the comment you made before. It was Thor and Joker. It's kind of like, ah. Thor's fucking awesome. He's incredible. But anyway, another rep. We'll get into Thor at a different time. Balls deep into Thor. Well, eventually I would like to move into at least the Marvel films. To yeah, absolutely. Look at them so we can critically analyse them compared to all our DC. Yeah. But that's mm. that's later on when we run out that's of DC. That's episode 52. Still away. Speaking of 52... Um, I read an article the other day saying that the new 52 is coming to an end. Yeah. They are hitting the reset button in, I think it said two years. Mm-hmm. And it all starts again. Big reset. So, I wonder if they'll do a crisis to end it. They will. Since the last 52 had to do with the crisis. Yeah, I and dare DC say. loved their crises. Yeah. Cross-eye? Cross-eye. 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 I don't know. Um, they like them making the crisis. They like them making the crisis. <laughs> with the mid bottles. Um but yeah, so I read that. I don't know if it was a prank or what. I'm gonna jump onto the official side of Tumblr. Yep. Have a scout through there on the DC. Um I'll post something from us and uh we'll see what happens. So right. I'll see if we can get some more information. But that's a rumor that I heard. And I think honestly it's almost that time where you do have to reset again because it's actually starting to get messy. Yeah. Because a lot of different companies are starting to go in, like the C dub started with Aaron now they've got Flash and then you've got Fox Eight with Gotham and it's just it's becoming this small... You're about to have uh, CBS with Supergirl, but it's able to cross into Supergirl. CW. It's able to cross CW's. into CW, um, yeah, Arrow um, and Flash. Flash. And then apparently I've heard... on that, they're doing a... CW yeah. doing another spin-off. Yeah, the, the, uh, what seems to be a Justice League, more than yeah, anything. No yeah. Ezra Miller. I haven't got too many details on it. No Ezra Miller. No, the only thing like I read that it's it doesn't seem to have Ollie in it, but yeah. it's nah. got... Uh, like, it's Ray. Yeah. yeah. Arsenal. Yeah. Uh, not you, Wells. Fuck off. No, that was Arsenal in his mustache. <laughs> That's right, bitches. Well, I'm sure. Beep, 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 beep. Um, I can't remember who else was in it. I know they, they mentioned Katie Loates may have a, a part. Who's Katie yeah. Loates? Which yeah. one's that? The original hey. Carrie. Oh, Sarah. Sarah. Oh, oh, Sarah. 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 Sorry. So oh, I don't know how it's going to tie in. I'm like, how I, does a Steven Spielberg I don't know if, how Sim it's all going to tie in, but I imagine that it might be... <coughs> Like I've always said, it feels really weird that they put all these shows on around the same season time and there's yeah. nothing to fill that downtime. So this, this may be the show. I reckon this may be that. Okay. The like in the summer we get the individual shows, in the winter we get superhero fun team. <laughs> mm. Super friends. Oh, I love the it. The Iron Ant Man. Oh, I'd love it if it was called <laughs> Super Friends just for one episode. Just give me one episode where it's called Super Friends. I'd love it. <laughs> it's just, yeah. oh, good Lord. Be so, good. well, I think that brings us to the end of the mailbag. Which yeah. means uh, there's, there's some things i got to say ready for next week. And that is this. Next week uh, is a bit of a, uh, bit of a smackdown because... Uh, going to get dirty. We're all, we're all very... Different. Very divided on this. Uh, next week is the big Iron Man meltdown spectacular. We're going to watch Iron Man 3 because I maintain it's the best Iron Man film. And these two are going to try to attempt me uh, to me that I'm wrong because they like the worst ones. But... Uh, to me, it's, it's the best this. film, and, and I'm going to go into why, and comic book-wise, and history-wise. No, 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 no. You and don't all that. get to go into comic Yeah, book. I do. I get to go into history. Do hi- you want to know why? Of course I get, I get to go into history. It's based on the history. That's like fucking saying. Really? Well, if we're going to talk about Batman, we can't talk about, like, the childhood he had. Okay, sorry. Don't talk about, like, his parents dying. One word. Mandarin. Yes. Yep. And, yep. I'll, and then I will explain that to you, because then if I can't go into the comic book world, I'll go into the Marvel one-shots, they still count in the continuity, and there's one that they explain exactly what Trevor Slattery is. 
Uh, Was it written after the movie? Nope. When was it written? It was written to coincide with Iron Man 3. (laughs) (laughs) That's not an argument. (laughs) It is. It's written to... But but you're laughing at that. When do you want it to come out before before the film? Law. I want law. I want established law. How can I give you established law if it can't from, come from the comic books and it can't from? It's come not from the established ra- law if it's written to coincide with the movie. No, in the comics, it was okay. Are you asking me the Marvel one shot? The Marvel like, one shot that they filmed, which is a six minute fucking film they no. released on Blu-rays, that was shot as they shot Iron Man three in the you comic can't... books when the whole Mandarin thing that I'm talking about and the history with. What's going on with Trevor Slattery and what's going on with so, Iron Man, that film. The Iron Man stuff is from the 70s. Yeah, that's fine. But the Mandarin, that's my biggest gripe. And you're saying, oh, no, I'm going to cite something that was written to coincide with the movie as evidence. Something that is specifically written to coincide with the movie. That's what you just said. It's specifically... Yeah, but, you, okay, your problem with the Mandarin in this is Trevor, is Trevor Slattery as the Mandarin. He's not the actual Mandarin. Yeah. That's my in, then watch the one shot where, for six minutes, the entire implication is, yeah, he is. He controlled the entire thing and hid it from Iron Man so he would not be killed. And when you watch from that perspective and actually see what he says, the stuff that basically it, it counts as deleted scenes from the film, because it's when he's in the prison afterwards, he is the Mandarin. Okay. I, I think we should stop this right now. The gloves are going on next week. It's going to be so much fun. There's a little sneak peek. (laughs) All right. Well, until next week when, like, (laughs) I'm going to need to turn the microphone down a touch, I think, because it's going to peak out a bit too much. The peak limiter will be going on. I think I just blew up part of the soundboard. (laughs) Sorry, man. uh, So on behalf of myself, Red Thunder, Adam Gerard, and the two idiots who will be proved wrong next week, (laughs) the Honey Vegetarian Neil. Goodbye. And the Dad Knight, Braden Ahern. See you guys. We'll see you all next week for the Iron Man Meltdown <laughs> Extravaganza. <laughs> Good night. And who are you? I'm Batman. 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 Yes, I'm Batman. Telegraph. I am Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. You sound like Cookie Monster. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Being a Cabana production. <laughs> and like, who was it arrested? Like a kid with Down syndrome? Like, uh, yeah, exactly. Damn. Mm-hmm.